I read y'all's dispatch last night. I, I haven't gotten up this morning. I, I had a good day yesterday. And, uh, I, I thought that the Harriman suggestion was excellent. I think that... Uh, we'll have Saigon trouble with that, but I think we can work it out. Uh, why don't you just let him do it on his own? We can do that. Just have him go and uh, have a December trip to Paris. Oh, yeah. He just... Uh, I think that's uh, I think that's good. I think the weakness of the government at this stage is that you ought to get Rusk and uh, Ball and McNamara, maybe Clifford, uh, yourself in a room and pick all the proposals to pieces. I thought your your reference in there last night that you just Wheeler, yeah. that you just can't take him through Wheeler's glasses or McNamara's glasses or my glasses, that our strength is going to be based on uh, uh, general overall uh, uh, viewpoint. And we observed uh, from the past that our original judgment on Cuban missile crisis was what we wanted to do the first hour. What ultimately was done uh, was quite different. The same thing with the same thing with Vietnam. So uh, I would much prefer, instead of chasing Rusk around the room as I did yesterday. Did you get anywhere? Uh, yes, I got his uh, thinking, which I think was very good, but uh, on a good many things. But to what I would like to have, if I could, when I come back before the series of meetings. I would like for you to come to my bedroom and say to me, we've talked this over and here's uh, uh, the preponderant uh, weight of the evidence is here as I see it, as we see it, and here are the objections to it. Then we go into the meeting and you take the agenda as we used to and say these are the things on it. Now let's everybody speak frankly and then the, summarize it and say, now here are the pros and here are the cons. And you can take the red candy or the vanilla, whichever you want, Mr. President. Uh, here, I would uh, take this if you're asking me. And then I think we get down to the nut cutting, so to speak, to the final wrap up. As it is now, we just explore what could be, what might be, what maybe is. And if we don't have that crisp. Uh, uh, so I think that you and Wheeler and McNamara and Rusk and Ball and perhaps Clifford uh, ought to uh, sit around your shop or the cabinet room and day on day until, say, Monday or whenever they think uh, the time's got to come. Uh, I think that it ought to very serious weight ought to be given to really breaking precedent somehow on budgets. I think it should ought to look over all the budgets we've ever had, and we ought to separate the regular budget from the Vietnam uh, increased war budget. Uh, I, uh, I would like to, for instance, uh, go on and get our supplemental out of the way and get whatever is reasonable, honest figure there. Then for our next one, just maybe not included in the budget, but just say that uh, for Vietnam, well, we're not including funds. We're going to get Westmoreland in here, and we're going to make our plans, and we're going to uh, put it in a separate budget, and we'll send that up at a certain day. Of course, that whole thing, uh, the thing we were talking about in December down in I would put uh, I would put the uh, Vietnam in a separate one. Now they'll just say, "Oh, that can't be done. That's never been done. It's unthinkable to do it." But uh, we did it this last year. If we hadn't, we'd already had controls and we'd had price increase. They're trying to break through right now. Martin's calling me this morning, and they're going to have an interest raise. And we're just going to let these newspapers by our big microphone talk. 
get us into a hell of an economic thing if we're not very, very cautious. What I would do, first, I don't know how many men, how much equipment, how much buildup we've got to have, but I would like to take uh, McNamara and Vance and Wheeler, and uh, uh, you and Comer and uh, uh, anybody that you want in that field, uh, Rusk and Ball and whoever he wants, his field, Clifford. Uh, I would like to get that group together in a room and and keep them there until they came up with what they thought we ought to do out there. Then I would give serious thought if they could, some way, our meeting. Uh, Lodge in Westmoreland at Honolulu so there wouldn't be a way too long. It wouldn't hurt us to do it Christmas. Uh, uh, our, uh, great idea. Uh, sit down with them. Uh, then uh, I would uh, have the peace things going all over the lot. You got McNamara. I would give serious thought to letting Humphrey do something. Uh, I, I talked to Rusk about him going to Poland. Not quite sure of that. He thinks the Polish think we they resent our goings on in the East West trade and they don't know uh, he doesn't know whether that would offend them or not. He gonna let me know, but I thought they handled the Burmaski real well and I thought his tribute to what we had done. Sure, they, if what? Nixon can get a reception in Poland that President George Hell you I don't see any worry there, but maybe I Anyway, I would surely shove the Averill thing. I would think of anything else that could. I'm not sure I wouldn't let Tommy Thompson take a trip. Just get him a little rest, get him a little fresh viewpoint, and uh, get him a couple of assistants, and uh, maybe uh, when some of this group goes somewhere, just say that he's going to take off for two or three weeks, and uh, let him go and sit around some of places. He might even... Uh, Right. You always got Chip Bowling coming back and forth. He's here now, and uh, I, he's kind of hard-boiled. I don't think he gives you much of a look at me. No, no I'm, I'm just saying that uh, if he can do it, if he can do it, this fellow just sits up there all the time. And, and I think that he could go out and see some of his old friends and maybe come in and say, why don't we try this? I am not happy with the fact that I said, now you've got till January the 1st to find me peace, and they haven't done any more than they have at it. Uh, I would, I asked Russ, though, to do two or three things yesterday. I said, dude, when you get up in the morning, you say your number one priority today, Mr. Secretary, is to provide the president with the the final recommendation when he comes back here as to what we do in the way of troops in Vietnam and the peace efforts in Vietnam. Uh, let's uh, right and left, let's have the prize fighter going uh, to illustrate as I did once. So see what you can develop all your people during the day on those two things. Now the first thing would require you and Bundy and Ball, McNamara and Wheeler and Vance, and I would put Clifford in the group just to just say he's head of the foreign intelligence. Um, and maybe Rayburn, I'd, just, I'd, have a, I'd have a meeting in there, and then I'd spend the next few days trying to say, what are we going to recommend the president this week? Second, I would try to say what uh, we can do, and uh, uh, whether Mansfield comes up for anything, whether uh, Humphrey could do anything, whether... Uh, Harriman could do anything. Maybe Bundy can do something. Maybe he can, uh, maybe you can do something. Maybe Thompson. Anybody that, that you've got any suggestion about. Maybe Bill Bundy ought to visit around and, and uh, explore here. Now, I don't want to go with my hat in my hand, but I sure do want to do what we said uh, in the last paragraph yesterday. Peace is coming. We want peace. We fight for peace. We work for peace. It's coming. I just want to I don't think that we get that image over enough. Uh, so there are your two things. Now on Santa Domingo, I want you to try to get Bunker to stay there till the election. He hasn't got a damn thing to do with OAS. 
He can come home on the weekend. Let's get Tony Solomon down there to help him. And let's get anybody else we can to help him. Tom Mann, Vaughn, anybody that can give him any help. And supplies, political advice. I know what I'd do if I'm going to give him that kind of a help. I'd get my change of deputy chief of mission, and I know the man to do it right here. And we're about to have Well, I let him have whoever he wanted like Vietnam, and he would get me to work rust kid good. He said he would try it. He thought maybe he could. Uh, that would uh, solve my... Uh, I'm sure as hell cover that flank. You know, I can't do the job down. I think that we foul our own nest uh, more than anybody else. I don't think that uh, things are going terrible in the world except in Vietnam, and I think we're doing so much better there, but uh, we are a gloomy group, and we go to talking about what could happen in the way of inflation, and pretty soon it, we talk ourselves into it. We go to talking about how terrible things are, uh, I look at the other leaders of the world, and I look at the Kennedy ratings in the world. Uh, this this man that was perfect, uh, who's perfect now as a world leader, by God, when he was the leader, uh, the polls were not uh, uh, good at all, except for the period immediately following the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And maybe in, uh, in, in 1980, my polls will be good. But. Uh, uh, Your polls are all right now. I don't see them uh, when, when, when Gallup takes them with Wilson, who I, I like, and I think he's a good fella, and I think he's, a, he's just a, a, about answering his pants all the time and is really plugging in everything. When I take them with him, when I take them to the press, that evidently loves the goal because he sees them once a year. But uh, with the goal and Earhart and with Wilson and with the Russians, I don't think we fare well in even in our own countries. And the the, the French poll yesterday yeah. was unbelievable. What the hell we've done to gain five points, I don't know. Uh, Scotty Reston and our own people just beat us over the head. It's Vietnam, Mr. President. Well, I read, I, I, I read yesterday in our papers here, and I just I, I pinched myself. The New York Times was just saying that we would tolerate uh, 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 no other ideas and no dissent and no uh, uh, freshness and no other viewpoints except our own. And uh, here we just come out of a civil rights meeting where they did nothing except just get up and raise hell and spit in your face. Uh, we just gone through your special meeting up there with your crackpots. Uh, 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 Wiesner and that group, and the Baltimore Sun says that Johnson wouldn't even listen to him. Said he wouldn't, his people just uh, said it's just a shame that they can't uh, be listened to. Well, hell, we'd listen to him for three days. I don't know any president that ever had as many people come in under his banner and cuss him, like the ICC and the, <laughs> and the, do you? I, I must say, Mr. President, it didn't sound to me like repression that three days. Well, I mean, do you know of any they president? They went away happy. Do you know of any no president? No other country in the world does it that way. No other country. And I said that to them in their meeting. We, come, we bring in the civil rights group, and they come right in, and by God, take their perch on the White House. And while they still uh, got the order or of going, uh, whiskey in one hand and a, and a weenie sausage in the other, they just raise an unsure deal and say, it's got to be 100 billion. And you say, where'd you get the figure? We don't know. We don't know. We're just 100 billion. That's all we know. And that's what we want before we go home tonight. And you just stay there and debate it with them. I spent an hour with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't have a debate. Well, they did go home happy, and they did have an absolutely free day, and the papers have been simply about it. Not all of them. Don't you think, though, the general image is that our country is, uh, uh, from the standpoint of international affairs, I read Hugh Sidey the other day, and he says we never have made a foreign policy decision. Have no background and have never made one. Just done whatever. Yeah. How'd you make out with Orville yesterday? I just did fine. I like Orville Freeman. Orville Freeman's a good man, an able man, and got the meanest job in the cabinet, and I didn't make any decision with him. I told him to go back and 
Let's see if he's optimistic. These Minnesota boys are Walter Heller, Hubert Humphrey, and Oliver Freeman. First thing you do, everything you say gets in the paper. You just got that to begin with. It's just, I'd rather have the transcript than to admonish them because they just cannot keep it. Uh, not one thing. They can't, if they go to bed with their wife, it'll appear in the paper the next morning. They just got to tell it. And it's in their water, the water they drink out there. So I tried to be careful what I said so that he couldn't truthfully uh, quote anything. I saw in Dick Wilson's column, who works for Luck and uh, the Coles, uh, three days ago that Freeman had to rewrite his speech in Rome and all about it. Well, you know, I didn't tell him that.